Tigers love to believe we're the low impact users out there. No engines, no crowds, no trash left behind. Just us, our backpacks, and the wild. But what if we're not as clean as we think we are? What if every step we take leaves a trace that we can't even see? I'm not talking about trash or carbon footprints. I'm talking about us, the so-called good outdoor people, me included. A few days ago, I came across something that honestly stopped me in my tracks because it turns out that even the gear that helps us get outside might be quietly working against the places that we love the most. Look, this isn't about guilt. It's about awareness. And once you know this, you can't really unknow it. So let's start there with what's really happening even in the wildest, most untouched, pristine places on this planet. A lot of the technical gear we rely on in the outdoors is made with synthetic materials. Things like waterproof jackets, insulated layers, fleece jackets, backpacks, tent fabrics, and even the soles of our hiking boots. We use them because they work. They keep us warm, they keep us dry, and they keep us safe in conditions where natural fibers alone wouldn't cut it. But over time, synthetic materials shed tiny little particles called microplastics. Think of how a fleece can get a little bit fuzzy or how the tread on your running shoes gradually wears down. Since all of this gear is made from synthetic materials derived from petroleum, these little bits of fuzzy rubber are actually microscopic flecks of plastic, microplastics. So yeah, this fleece right here from REI, it basically has the same amount of plastic in it as a massive trash bag. We don't see these particles and we definitely don't notice when they come off our gear. They're practically invisible, but that doesn't mean they're not there. And because these macroplastics are so small, they don't just stay where they fall. They can travel into soil, into streams, into snowmelt that feeds the rivers and our water supply. Once they're out in the environment, they're almost impossible to remove. We know plastic doesn't degrade. So these tiny bits are floating around everywhere, forever. Now, I want to be really, really clear here. I'm not saying we should stop using technical gear. That wouldn't be safe or realistic, especially in cold or unpredictable conditions. The problem isn't that we're doing something wrong when we go hiking. It's that we didn't realize the gear keeping us comfortable and alive as we leave no trace is also leaving behind well, a really nasty trace. And once I understood what microplastics actually are, I wasn't sure I even wanted to ask my next question. Where are they actually showing up? So one of the clearest examples now studied by researchers comes from the Adirondacks in New York, a place many of us think as accessible wilderness a popular destination for hikers, backpackers, and peak baggers. But in a recent study, researchers tested Lake Tier of the Clouds, a high elevation lake that gets regular foot traffic from hikers. Then they tested a nearby smaller, more remote pond that doesn't have hardly any human impact. They used this quieter pond as a control group and the difference between the two was significant. Lake Tear of the Clouds had 23 times more microplastics than the smaller pond. This is just on the trails and the dirt and in the water. The only difference between the two ponds, the number of visitors. And here's the important part. This wasn't from people leaving behind trash or breaking the rules. These microplastics were found in a place where people were already trying to do the right thing by leaving no trace. Researchers say that the soft-soled rubber soles on hiking footwear in synthetic apparel, quote, quote, appear to be significant contributors to microplastics finding their way into these remote, otherwise pristine waters. Too long didn't read version? Our synthetic outdoor gear is shedding all over Mother Nature. And if this is happening in the Adirondacks where everyday hikers go for quiet, for beauty, and for unspoiled nature, 
then it's not surprising that it's also being found in the most remote places on Earth. Back in 2020, microplastic fibers were documented on Mount Everest, near base camp and at higher altitudes, the highest mountain in the world. And still, these microplastics are there. So this isn't an over there problem. It doesn't only happen in extreme expedition environments. It's here too, on the trails we hike, the lakes we filter water from, and the backcountry that we all love. And that's honestly where this gets quite personal, because if you're anything like me, your technical gear isn't optional. When I first read the Adirondack study, I couldn't stop thinking about it. The next morning, I headed out to hike Mount Sopris, which is a nearly 13,000 foot peak here that kind of looms over my small town. And I couldn't get this study out of my head. I had on all the same technical gear I always do for shoulder season conditions with lots of snow and wind, waterproof pants, gaiters, a hard shell, mittens, and somewhere around treeline, it hit me. I needed this gear to be safe and comfortable on the side of this mountain, but I was also shedding a boatload of microplastics onto one of my most favorite mountains on the planet. That's a hard thing to sit with because most of us, like you and me, who hike or backpack or ski, we genuinely care about these places. We follow Leave No Trace. We pack it in. We bag it out. We pick up extra trash that we see on the trails. We choose these activities because they feel low impact. But microplastics don't care about our intentions. They're invisible and they're happening whether we mean to or not. So instead of trying to solve it right there on the mountain in the snow, I started asking better questions. How can I use my gear longer? How can I buy smarter so I'm not contributing to churn? And how can I support brands who are actually trying to reduce microplastic shedding or creating better alternatives. We might not be able to remove synthetics from outdoor gear overnight. And honestly, we probably shouldn't on trips where safety depends on it. But there are practical things we can all do to reduce microplastic impact starting now. So let's talk about a few changes that actually make a difference without compromising on safety or adventure. Here are three realistic ways to make a difference without giving up the gear that keeps us safe. Number one, start small, wash smarter. A lot of microplastics come off in the wash, especially from fleece and technical base layers. So the quick fix is to quit obsessively washing your gear. Your outdoor gear doesn't need to be washed every time you use it. So try to keep those washes to a minimum. When it is necessary, try using a microfiber catching bag or filter. A guppy friend or a filtrol can trap some of those fibers before they enter our water systems. It's not perfect, but it's one of the easiest changes you can make right now. Number two, buy less and use longer. The longer we use what we already own, the less new stuff we have to make. And that means fewer synthetic fibers in circulation overall, which also means fewer products derived from petroleum. Rewaterproof your jacket, patch your pants, borrow or buy secondhand when you can. Extending a product's life by just nine months can cut its carbon, waste, and water footprint by up to 20 to 30%. That is huge. Number three, support innovation and accountability. Finally, support the brands and technologies working to tackle this problem. Some are developing biodegradable synthetic fibers, Others are experimenting with recycled or closed loop production to minimize shedding. Ask questions, comment on product pages. Brands pay attention where their customers actually care. And if you have any questions, I have written many reported stories on this topic and learned in ton. If I don't know the answer, I can direct you to people that are so much smarter than me. We can't hike or ski without gear, but we can change the relationship we have with it. The small decisions we make, what we buy, how long we use it, and who we support do add up. It's not about guilt. It's about awareness. And awareness is where change really starts. 
And if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. I know this is a bit different than my recent videos, but this type of conversation matters to me. And again, like I said, it's what I've covered as a journalist for many years. I hope this matters to you too. So thanks again, and we will see you out there. Thank you.